here we are everybody the ptb in dead by daylight bringing you a new survivor and a new killer so we're gonna take a look at the killer here real quick i'm a killer main so i definitely gotta check him out first um get a feel for it um so let's just go straight into his stuff so genetic limits his first perk uh, when a survivor finishes the healing action they suffer from the exhausted status effect for um, 24 seconds is the first level. Uh, I believe it goes up to 36 seconds, um, if I remember correctly. Uh, so it's just going to make it a lot harder for them to get away. So if you're pushing them um, and they finish off the heal, it's just going to make it harder. They're not going to have that dead hard. They're not going to have life. They're not going to have sprint burst, stuff like that. So so those meta perks aren't really going to be used right there or be useful for them. Uh, and then force hesitation. When a survivor is put into a dying state by any means, all other survivors standing within a 16 meter range around them suffer the hindered status effect for 10 seconds uh, reduces their movement speed by 15 percent um, so then it goes on a cooldown for 60 seconds so that definitely helps as well um, chasing survivors uh, me personally i don't have a whole lot of moments where I'm chasing a survivor and I knock him into a dying state and there's multiple survivors right there. Um, a lot of the time when I chase survivors, whenever I'm playing anyway, they they kind of get secluded on their own. Um, I've played with a, cup, with a couple groups of people that um, split off and then once I pick, every, pick the, the survivor up, then they start body blocking with all three of them. Um, and then that makes it really hard for me. Um, so maybe that will help out a little bit. Um, I don't see that being great for me. Um, for other people, maybe. But for me, not really. Uh, machine learning. Uh, so this is a little bit different. So when while this is active, after damage a generator, this perk activates. And while this is active, the next generator you damage will be compromised um, until it is completed. The generator is then highlighted in yellow so you know where it's at. And then when that compromise generator is completed, you become undetectable and gain 7% haste for 20 seconds. Uh, and then it deactivates. And now if you damage a generator while another generator is compromised, the compromise generator becomes the last one that you just damaged. Um, so it will transfer from one to the next. It's not going to stay with all of them. Uh, so that could be really cool. Um, depending on how his perks or uh, how his ability works for like the teleportation part and how easy it is to teleport um, with him uh, I haven't used him yet um, so I really don't know I've seen people use them where they put up uh, the biopods and they can teleport to everybody um, some people are have been really good with them already um, so I'd like to see and how it progresses um, once they actually come to the full game if this stays where it's at um, and whatnot but that could be really good um, down down towards like later games and stuff like that um, Now let's go and let's, let's look at his ability So it's called quantum instantiation Or instantiation uh, Correct me if I'm wrong um, Now what happens is he can shoot and spawn biopods around the map the biopods attached to any vertical surface uh, And now you can control each biopod remotely and then look through it. So it's a camera uh, essentially and then you can tag survivors inside of it affecting them with a, sil a slipstream now when those survivors are slipstreamed the singularity can then teleport next to the slipstream survivor by using the biopods to tag them or by shooting them now when a slipstream survivor is in proximity to another survivor the slipstream then spreads across them it's like a disease pretty much now he has a special state called overclock mode after a successful slipstream teleport he enters overclock mode allowing him to destroy pallets and walls faster vault windows faster and he won't be stunned by any pallets now attempts to stun the pallet just remove that overclock and they just temporarily slow him down a little bit um, so it's kind of like he has uh, enduring on um, for those pallets and spirit fury so that way he just doesn't have to worry about it at all um, you know, I mean, breaking the walls, pallets faster is 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 good. Um, I'd like to see how the vaulting speed, how much faster he is at vaulting. Um, because if it gets really crazy on speed, that could be 
absolutely scary um, for a survivor to try to loop you and then you jump through that window and then you're right there just waiting for him so we'll see how fast that is um, and then you have a special interaction uh, electromagnetic pulse uh, so at the beginning of the trial the supply cases spawn containing an EMP um, then they use those EMPs to remove the slipstream from the cells or others and then they also disable the biopods briefly and then once used obviously the EMP is then destroyed uh, so I don't know how many cases there are that spawn. It's just several. So I mean, is it five, seven, ten? How many are there? Um, so depending on how many there are, could we could see on um, how insane that could be. And also it depends on the add-ons. Um, I believe there's add-ons that lower the amount of EMPs um, that that spawn on the map and everything like that. So I'm excited to see the builds that we come out with. Um, I'm. Uh, I'm thinking Tinker is going to be a good one um, just for just knowing where the generators are so you can go hit it for his machine learning uh, but I've been seeing people running a lot of Noed on him just to teleport to the people and just knock them instantly um, as well as using like whispers um, discordance to know when, there, when there's multiple people on a gen uh, so we'll see We'll see how things go and see and people come up with some crazy builds here in the PTB. And then once it hits uh, main game, we'll see what, what all sticks and, and what people just kind of throw to the wayside. Uh, but now let's go look at the uh, the survivor and just kind of see what he has going for him. Uh, so his name is Gabriel Soma. Uh, so he has Troubleshooter. Uh, so when he's chased by a killer, the troubleshooter activates. So you get to see the aura of the generator with the most progress. And then you also see the aura of the killer after dropping a pallet. Now that effect will last for six seconds after the chase is ended and then deactivates. Uh, so that's... I, I don't know exactly what you would need to see the, the aura of the, la the generator with the most progress for. Um... Unless there's people on it and you just try to steer them away from it. That's the only thing I can see for it. Um, but other than that, it's not that big of a deal for me. Um, and then seeing the aura of the killer um, four seconds after dropping the pallet. That's while this is activated. Like when you are chased by the killer. I, I, me personally, I don't really lose the track of the killer when I'm in a chase. Unless it's like the spirit um, and she goes invisible. But I don't think that when she's in her phase walk that you're going to be able to drop a pallet and be able to see her aura. I don't think it's going to be that broken. Uh, made for this. So made for this activates while you're in the injured state. You run 1% faster on yellow. Um, I believe purple is 5%. Um, so that's kind of cool that, that you're going to be 5% faster. I don't know how that's going to coordinate with certain killers and if you're going to be able to outrun them like you can the nurse. Because um, if you can outrun certain killers, that's going to be very, very useful um, and very strong of a perk. And then after you finish healing another survivor, you gain the endurance effect for 6 seconds. So but now you can't use it when you're suffering from exhaustion, but it doesn't cause exhausted. Okay, so if you use dead hard, if you use sprint burst, you just use life or something like that, you won't be able to use this perk. But you can use it and then not go into that exhausted effect. So so if you're just running around hurt all the time uh, and you heal, well you're gonna get that endurance effect, so you can take that hit and you just kind of run off. So that's going to be kind of cool. And now scavenger. This one is something different. Uh, so while you're holding an empty toolbox, scavenger activates. Now succeeding a great skill check while repairing gains one token up to six. When you reach maximum tokens, you lose all those tokens and automatically recharge your toolbox to full. So scavenger is disabled for the remainder of the trial after recharging a toolbox. So you only get to use it one time. But now, this perk also has a secondary effect to it, where this perk grants the ability to rummage through an opened chest once per trial and guarantee a basic toolbox. 
So if you run into this, run in with scavenger with no toolbox, you can have two full toolboxes for the price of running in with nothing. Because you'll scavenge out of an empty chest, you'll hit the skill checks, and then you'll get another one from those skill check hits. Now, if you go in with a toolbox, you will use your toolbox, hit the skill checks, refill your toolbox, and then you could rummage through a chest and then get a third, a technical third toolbox out of that. So if you have four of these guys all run in with a toolbox, you're going to get essentially 12 toolboxes on the map. So that's that's going to spark up that gen progression very fast or just a ton of sabotage on hooks. Um, so so that's kind of crazy. So I like we'll see what happens with him. See see uh, what kind of perk setups um, that people throw together with these. Um, I definitely see made for this being used quite a bit. Uh, just for the fact that you're running faster when you're hurt as well as when you heal you get the endurance effect that's definitely something that I see people running a lot of um, the only thing that's going to hold you back from running this perk is if you're using exhausted perks a lot like if you're running both dead hard and lithe I see that a lot uh, so if you're running that both those you're not going to be running this one with it because you're going to be using dead hard sometime when you're hurt and then you're going to be using life to jump through windows. And you're going to be exhausted. You're not going to be able to use this, use this perk. Um, but it does help in those situations that you're not running both of those. Maybe you're only running dead hard. So when you're hurt, you're just running faster. And you have the option to use dead hard if you need it. But you can also go heal somebody and get that endurance effect for those six seconds. So... I mean, the, the opportunity for builds with the perks that they put in for the survivors is there. And the opportunities for those builds with the killer is is out there. They, there is so many different builds that, that are possible with that killer that are going to work. Um, I just am very looking forward to seeing really what people come up with. Um, and just kind of see everybody's take and just the creativity that we're going to get. So so hopefully the killer is just fantastic going in through this PTB and then the feedback we get to the developers to behavior is just going to be just that much better and just make everything just so crisp. But let me know what you guys thoughts are on the killer and the survivor. Um, the killer looks great, I think, compared to what we've been having with all the humanoid killers. It's so great to see a non-humanoid killer to have that mechanical uh, the artificial intelligence killer it's it's a great sight to see um, it looks like DVD is going to be on a, a great track for for this next chapter um, just hopefully they can hold up to it 